Well, hey everybody, welcome back. Again, my name's Scott and this is Nathan and we are continuing to work through Matthew Kelly's book, The Seven Levels of Intimacy. Uh, today, we are looking at chapter number 12 on faults, fears, and failures, which kind of reminds me of what we say at Celebrate Recovery, hurts, habits, and hangups. Yeah. Maybe it's three words, but um, we're definitely in the same ballpark. That's right. Although we are definitely deep in it. We are right? deep in it. I mean, facts and opinions and cliches, hopes and, you know, hopes and dreams, feelings, but then you get to this one and some people will want to walk out of the room, right? Yes. So, because the tagline is false fears and failures, right? I need help. I'm afraid I messed up. Mm -hmm. So those three statements are super hard to say out loud. <laughs> Well, you think about the difference here between the fifth level, as you just mentioned, the feelings and the six false fears and failures. It's one thing, and it's it's a big step to say, I'm angry, right. especially if if I'm feeling angry at you. That's a, that yeah. definitely takes some strength, courage. Yeah. It does feel differently to me to say, I struggle with. Yeah, it does, um, and thankfully that's of course why people come to celebrate recovery because there's some sense of i'll get help or i made a mistake or there are fears that i'm that you know that i'm trying to overcome so of course in the celebrate recovery context we do often talk about false fears and failures in the you know in the context of hurts habits and and uh sorry hang-ups hang yeah. yeah yeah so um he does basically say this is the emotional equivalent of feeling naked mm -hmm. because in, t in some ways feelings is vulnerability where you're willing to share some feelings, some process that's going on. But here there are, are true things that, that make you, can make you look weak, mm -hmm. which, which is, is a hard thing because actually what happens when people share their story every other week, right? Mm -hmm. People clap and yeah. they, why? Yeah. Because, because everybody knows, right? Yeah. We all have them. Yeah. And when someone has the courage to share them, that the reaction is different than what is really kind of bubbling on, on the inside. Which is an interesting you know? point because I suppose when I first started coming to celebrate recovery and people would share their story, which let's be honest, often not always often included a long list of sins and then we would applaud them at the end <laughs> um, yes i yes. had to i had to say we're applauding their courage for sharing their faults yeah obviously we're not applauding the fault itself you're applauding the you're applauding the faith level and the trust level as well well to be able to share and to be able to to say and we're getting into this, but to say that I have false fears and failures, but I am moving towards the best version of myself. Now that would be Matthew mm. Kelly's words, Yes. right? Because yes. you're coming to celebrate recovery because in some way you have dared to risk this aspect that God says, you know, I redeemed you. I'm making you new, mm. you know, I'm, I'm making you whole again mm -hmm. and you believe it. And so the only way to do that is, in fact, uh, I'm going to read this off because it kind of goes along. Uh, it is here that we have to tend to the wounds of the past. Sometimes these wounds have been ignored for years and we find them infected and festering. Mm. Cleaning our wounds can be excruciatingly painful, but if we are to recover and grow strong, it cannot be avoided. Yeah, if we're so. going to become the best version of ourself which i love he keeps that theme very consistent yes. from start to finish yeah we have to find somebody that we can share our emotions with but also share our failures with and you know going back to when people share their story at celebrate recovery it is striking to me being in the audience and listening part of what we're applauding is their courage but we're also I, I know I feel more connected to that person, which is the whole premise of this book. Yes, because it, it's intimacy on that. That's right. It, and I may or may not even know the person who's sharing their story, but the fact that they were courageous enough to share their faults, I suddenly feel more connected to them, even if it's a person on a video that I've never met before. Yes. 
So this really is a powerful it is. step. I, I, I have talked to some people and we've shared hopes and dreams. Hmm. We've shared some fears and we've shared some faults. And that conversation can immediately just bring you to such a level of intimacy that some people that, you know, I may pass every Sunday, or even some people here on staff that I don't know, I have more intimacy with that person than I do with, with people I might pass every day. Mm. Why? Because you've chosen to kind of bypass cliches, and, and I'm not saying you can do that for every for every relationship, of course. Yeah. But it does mean that you can know them on a on a different level where any time you connect with them, there's already a starting point, you know? That's right. Um, I know he talks yeah. in this chapter about taking ownership of our failures versus becoming a victim. Yes. So we do need to be aware that when we share our faults, now we may be, uh, in fact, this was in the lesson on at Celebrate Recovery yeah. on Monday, we may be a victim. It's possible to be 100% a victim. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, we need to be honest about that. Yeah. But in many cases, we may be a victim. We may also be an agent. We may be 100% the agent. We may be the yes. one who's victimizing someone. But we do need to take ownership of our fault. So we're not just sharing mm -hmm. to get somebody's pity. We're sharing to say, I recognize this in myself. Mm -hmm. And at least this is how I would say it. I'm bringing it to God, I'm asking Him to change me, and I'm also taking these steps. Yeah. I, I think it's, I, I look at it as ownership over your story. Mm -hmm. It means that no matter if you were a victim at one time, or you had faults or fears, whatever it, it is in the past, you're owning your story and saying, but at what point am I going to decide to be my the best version of myself versus the worst version. Let's face it, you can have two people go through the exact same mm -hmm. thing, you know? Uh, I'm thinking of Viktor Frankl again, like mm -hmm. the Holocaust, right? Mm -hmm. And one person can come out being very vengeful, mm -hmm. very bitter, mm -hmm. and they they find that that's the path they want to be on, to, which is just more death and destruction. Whereas Victor wanted to find meaning, mm -hmm. and he wanted to move towards, you know what, the Holocaust is not going to define, well, it defines a story, but it's not going to dictate what his future That's is going right. to be. So, Another aspect he talks about in this uh, level, in this chapter 12, is forgiveness. He says forgiveness is a big part of this. At some point, if I'm going to share a fault, mm -hmm. I need to, again, I'll speak for myself, I would need to confess that yeah. before God, uh, confess it to another person, but then I need to receive forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Like I can't move forward. I can yeah. tell you my fault, but if I've not received forgiveness for it, sorry, mm -hmm. if I don't accept God's forgiveness for it, I'm still gonna stay stuck. Yeah, and I, and I think learning to receive that forgiveness is, I don't know if I'd call it a skill or just something to grow in. Mm -hmm. You know, the ability to receive God's grace, to receive forgiveness from others. So of course to forgive others, but this brings us to a really important point that he talks about, which is, you know, his foundation is moving towards the best version of yourself. And it, and obviously we will still have faults and fears, some failures that hold us, that we feel will hold us back and think, well, I guess I'm not the best version of myself. Maybe I should just give up. And yeah. he says, well, actually, it's the idea that we're moving towards that. That's right. Now, Matthew Kelly is a Christian. So I would like to think that he, of course, understands that we will become the best version of ourselves after death, when yes. when there's a fullness of yeah. co connection to God, you know, connection to the Holy Spirit. When when you know Christ finishes the work that is going on, but at the same time, he says, "But we can move towards that right now." Mm -hmm. And though there might be a fault, though there might be something that. At one point, you decide, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be the best version of myself right now. The point is to get back on track, to receive forgiveness, you know, to admit it, take ownership over it, and that, and that is how. In fact, he does say, the sixth level of intimacy is about being set free from the shackles of victimhood, becoming a dynamic 
choice maker. Mm. Dynamic choice maker, I think, means you're you're now seeing which choice choices are ahead of you, yeah. even after you've made a mistake. Because yeah. a lot of people, let's let's face it, a lot of people make the common, especially in addiction, they'll keep making that mistake, and that is where they'll feel like they should move away from God, mm -hmm. which actually they should just move closer yeah. after the mistake. Yeah, yeah. So there's an amazing thing that happens. The more we own our faults, which again is hard to do. Yeah. But the more we own our faults, he talks about this, the freer we become to accept mm -hmm. other people where they are. That doesn't mean by accepting them where we are. Again, we're not applauding someone's, actually applauding their failures. Yeah. But we are recognizing, hey, I'm in, as we might say in Christian circles, I'm a fallen image bearer too. I bear the image of God, but I'm also fallen and I make mm -hmm. mistakes. And the more we recognize, wow, God, you've really forgiven me of a whole lot. It opens mm -hmm. my circle of grace yes. to say, okay, that's where, how am I any different than you? Yeah. And in fact, seeing that level of grace for yourself gives you the capacity to forgive others. That's even. right. You start to see how much limitations you have and where your faults lie. And, and if I own them more, I am able to now, when I see any limitations for, for Scott or anyone else, I can say, man, it's okay. Mm. You know, I can, I can easily forgive. I can easily draw them into loving intimacy, which he does say that's the power that intimacy has is that it, it frees people. Um, in fact, there's this one line that he says, the genius of intimacy is that when we bring our dark side out into the light in the context of a loving relationship, our darkness loses its power over us. Mm. Darkness cannot abide the light of love. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm thinking of scripture again, which is, you know, darkness flees before That's right. the light. That's right. And it can only happen in that loving intimacy. Yeah. That's what that's what light is here in, in this context. Excellent. Yeah, I would like to think that our our all of our care ministries here at Celebrate Recovery reflect this statement. Mm -hmm. I know what that's like. I've been there too. That doesn't mean I've necessarily yeah. experienced the same thing you have or have done the same thing or vice versa. But Empathy allows me to um, try and feel what you might be feeling. Mm -hmm. And as a human being, I can probably relate to that. Yeah, I know what that's like. I've been there too. It's a very powerful message. And it is very vital to connection. Yes. You absolutely. know, when you have empathy, people feel connected. They feel safe. They feel like they can trust you. Yeah. They don't feel judged. They just feel loved. Mm. And, and that is the power that love has to come in and, and start helping people be set free. Yeah. So. And it's interesting, that freedom, yeah. for many, is an invitation to become more of who God created them to be. Exactly. The, the best version of yourself. The best version of yourself. And you start believing it, and, and I think it's an identity issue, you know, because... I think there's a subtle shift that happens for an addict, you know, even for myself, and in thinking, you know, I I am a alcoholic, I am a gam, mm -hmm. I, and you start moving that from from that statement to a, you know, what I I am a child of God, mm -hmm. I am a grateful a, a grateful follower yeah. of Jesus Christ, and next time you're thinking about it you will think, does a grateful follower of Jesus do that? Do mm. they, does someone, does a grateful follower of Jesus make that kind of choice? Mm. Probably not, you know, that's probably not grateful, you know, or that's, or that's not, man, he wants us to partner with him and, and the kingdom coming on earth as it is in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you start thinking, how does, how do I make a decision according to the identity? Because if I just say I'm an alcoholic, then an alcoholic will make those decisions. That's right. And, you know, I mean, there's still a tension of, that's still a fault that I carry. And yet, a greater truth is that God still does call us by name now. Which is why at Celebrate Recovery, those who get up to speak will say, I'm a grateful believer in Jesus who struggles with. Yeah. And that's very different than saying, I am an alcoholic. 
right. who is also a grateful believer. The, the right. language is subtle, but it's very, very important. It is very important. I, I, I mean, it's it redefines what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So we hope you come back for the next session because we're going to push it to level seven. And I'll give you just That's a right. hint. It will have something, having Rick just read this this morning, it has something to do with love. So come back next time. <laughs> That's right. Level seven is coming. Be ready for the, <laughs> for the intimacy, right? There you go. All right. See you guys. Take care.